Lillahi ta'ala, correct your intentions. قال المصنف رحمه الله Said the author, may Allah have mercy upon him. وَيَجُوزُ لِلْمُسَافِرِ أَنْ يَجِمَعَ بَيْنَ الظُّهْرِ وَالْعَصْرِ It is permissible for the traveler to merge ظُهْر and عَصْر وَبَيْنَ الْمَغْرِبِ وَالْعِشَاءِ and to merge Maghrib and Isha fi waqti ayyihima sha in whichever time of those two one wants yani dhuhr nasr so whichever time of those two you want you can do both of them in either time yani advance asr forward and pray dhuhr nasr at dhuhr time or delay dhuhr and then pray Vuhr and Asr at Asr time. And then same thing for Maghrib and Isha. As Sharh, the explanation, Yajuzu al Jamru Bain al Vuhri wal Asr wa Bain al Maghribi wal Isha. It is permissible to merge Vuhr and Asr, to pray them together at the same time. And to pray Maghrib and Isha at the same time. جمع تقديم في وقت الأولى وجمع وجمع تأخير في وقت الثانية. It would be a merger of advancement if you pray in the earlier time, and it would be a merger of delay if you pray in the later time. في السفر الطويل during a long journey ولا تجمع الصبح إلى غيرها and the dawn prayer is not merged with any other prayer ولا العصر مع المغرب nor is عصر merged with مغرب والأصل في ذلك ما رواه معاذ بن جبل رضي الله عنه. The source of that is what Mu'adh ibn Jabal narrated. May Allah accept his deeds. قال خرجنا مع رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم في غزوة تبوك. He said we went out with the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم. During the invasion of Tabuk, فَكَانَ يَجْمَعُ بَيْنَ الظُّهْرِ وَالْعَصْرِ وَالْمَغْرِبِ وَالْعِشَاءِ And he used to merge ظُهْر and عَصْر and مَغْرِب and عِشَاءِ فَأَخَّرَ الصَّلَاةَ يَوْمًا ثُمَّ خَرَجَ فَصَلَّ الظُّهْرَ وَالْعَصْرِ جَمِيعًا So he delayed the prayer one day. Then he came out and prayed ظُهْر and عَصْر. Together. ثم دخل ثم خرج فصلى المغرب والعشاء جميعا. Then he went in. Then he came out later, and he prayed Maghrib and Isha together. وروى البخاري عن ابن عباس. Also, Al Bukhari narrates from Ibn Abbas. أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم كان إذا سافر that the Prophet وسلم, if he would travel, يجمع بين الظهر والعصر وبين المغرب والعشاء. He would merge ظهر and عصر and مغرب and عشاء. ثم لجمع التقديم ثلاثة شروط. Furthermore, for the merger of advancements. There are three conditions. Ahaduha an yabda abil ula. The first condition, yani, if you want to pray the later prayer in the earlier time, is to start with the first prayer. The earlier one, bi an yusalli al zuhr qabl al asr. By praying zuhr before praying asr, that's a condition. والمغرب قبل العشاء and by praying Maghrib before Isha 
That's because the time is really for the first prayer. And the second prayer is really a follow-up for the first one. The first one is being prayed in its own original time. The second one is following the first one, really. So you can't pray the second one first. A follower doesn't go ahead of what it follows. Because yani, it can't be a follower when you're in front. So had a person started with the later prayer first in the earlier time, he prayed Asr before Maghrib or Isha, I'm sorry, he prayed Asr before Dhuhr or Isha before Maghrib in the earlier time, yani, a Dhuhr time or Maghrib time, it's not valid. Then he has to repeat that later one again after he prays the earlier one. You said, to combine Zuhur and Asr together, you have to be a traveler? No, not always. There's other reasons too. But we're talking about now, traveler. At the moment, we're talking about the traveler in particular. If you can see my screen, then you can see the next paragraph. It is permissible for the resident in the rain to combine between them, etc. So that's another reason, the rain. Now we're talking about the traveler. The second condition The second condition is to have the intention of advancing the later prayer or the intention of merging prayers. When you say the takbir for the first prayer, not before you enter into the prayer, it's not enough to have decided that that's what you want to do before you say the takbir for the first prayer. You have to have the intention while you're saying the takbir. Or according to even the more prominent saying in the school, you have to have the intention to bring the second prayer forward anytime while praying. So that's two sayings. Now while you were listening, you might have said, huh? I thought you could have the intention anytime while praying. First one. Yes, that's even stronger saying. Even if you had the intention to bring the later prayer forward while saying the salam. While you're saying the salam of Dhuhr, you're making the intention to bring Asr forward, that's valid, according to the more prominent saying. So it's not going to be permissible after you actually say the salam for the first prayer. So it's not enough to decide that you want to bring Asr prayer forward before you start Dhuhr. And if you prayed your whole Dhuhr and forgot, and then after you said salam, you said, oh, snap, I wanted to pray Asr, I forgot. Now it's khalas, too late. You have to wait for Asr to come in. The third condition is succession between the first prayer and the second prayer. That's if you're praying in the earlier time, not the later time. These are conditions for praying in the earlier time, praying the later prayer in the earlier time. You have to start with the first prayer first, the prayer whose time it is. That's first condition. You have to have the intention to bring the second prayer forward while you're engaged in the first prayer. That's the second condition. 
And the third condition is that you pray them back to back. Al-Muwalah. فَلَوْ وَقَعَ الْفَصْلُ الطَّوِيلُ بَيْنَهُمَ مْتَنَعَ ضَمُّ الثَّانِيَةِ إِلَى الْأُولَى And so, if a long pause or break fell between those two prayers, then it's not possible to bring the second one into the time of the first one. I say it's not possible, we're not talking about creed here we're not saying mentally impossible it means here it's not permissible and there will be no other option but leaving that second prayer yani delaying that second prayer to pray it in its own time Regardless of whether a person had an excuse for this long pause between the two prayers or not, an excuse is like he forgot. And then he remembered, oh, I want to pray the second prayer, but there was a long pause. Or he fainted. So it's out of his power. Or some other excuse that's out of his control or a real actual excuse. Or even if he didn't have an excuse, it doesn't matter. But a small pause between those two prayers is not harmful. Like the time it takes to make iqamah. So what do you do? Stand up after you finish the first prayer, make iqamah, and then pray the second prayer. If you want to make iqama. ثُمَّ جُمْهُورُ الْأَصْحَابِ جَوَّزُوا الْجَمْعَ بَيْنَ الصَّلَاتَيْنِ بِالتَّيَمُّمِ وَفِيهِ فَصْلٌ مَعَ نَوْعِ طَلَبٍ لِلْمَاءِ بِشَرْطِ أَنْ يَكُونَ خَفِيفًا Furthermore, the majority of the mujtahids in the madhab, they permit Merging two prayers, even if you're praying by tayammum. Although there's going to be a pause between those two prayers because one tayammum is only good for one obligation. So if there were a short search for the soil, or for the water rather, a short search for the water, for example, Yani, there were, if there were, a short search for the water, because remember in Tayammum, unless you know there's no water, or you know it's so far, then you have to look for it every time, as long as you deem it's possible that it's that there is water. So, if it's a case where you have to look for the water, then you have to look for it. That's the rule. So, if it were a short pause between the two prayers, when you looked for the water and didn't find it, but you did that in a proper way. Then, and then you made tayammum for the next prayer, and then you prayed, then that's valid. So what's a long pause between these two prayers? A long pause is like the time it, pray, the time it takes to pray two rakahs. The time it takes to pray two rakahs, that's a long pause. What's not a long pause? What's not a long pause is... A, the, a time that does not fit two rakahs, two complete rakahs, a time that does not fit, yani, a two rakah prayer. Light, a light one, a, long, a light two rakah prayer, not a long one. Hadha fi jamri taqdeem. So what we have said is concerning praying the later prayer in the earlier time. As for merging by delaying the earlier prayer to the later time, it's not a condition to pray them in order. If you pray Asr first and then Dhuhr, it's valid. Or if you pray Isha first and then Maghrib, it's valid. 
because it's the time for the later prayer. So it's valid to do so. Not better though, just valid. It's better to keep your prayers in order. وَلَا نِيَةُ الْجَمْعِ وَلَا نِيَةُ الْجَمْعِ حَالَ الصَّلَاةِ عَلَى الصَّحِيحِ وَلَا الْمُوَالَاهِ Also, if you delay the earlier prayer to the later time, it's not a condition to make the intention to merge the two prayers in one prayer time while you're praying. Then how would you do it? You just wait for the earlier time to come in, like you wait for the Lord time to come in, and then before the time goes out, you intend. Now I intend to delay Zuhur until Asr time. Now I intend to delay Maghrib until Isha time. So now you don't have to pray Zuhur until Asr time, and you don't have to pray Maghrib until Isha time. So when you do pray Maghrib at Isha time, now you don't have to have in your heart the intention to merge the two prayers. Khalas, you already delayed the earlier prayer to the later time. And now you're praying the earlier prayer in the later time. And it's not a condition to do them back to back. So if you prayed Maghrib first and then waited a long time and then prayed Isha, it's valid. This is the case of delaying. نعم يجب أن ينوي في وقت الأولى كون التأخير لأجل الجمع تمييزا عن التأخير متعديا. And yes, like we just said, it is necessary to intend in the earlier time to delay that earlier prayer to the later time. So that you don't fall into a case of missing the prayer. So even if you are a traveler, but you don't intend to delay Zuhur until Asr time or Maghrib until Isha time, and then you just don't pray Zuhur until Asr time comes in, you will have committed a major sin of not praying on time. So you have to make the intention during the time of the earlier prayer to delay it until the later time. لِأَلَّا يَخْلُوَ الْوَقْتُ عَنِ الْفِعْلِ أَوْ الْعَزْمِ this way, when you make that intention, the time won't be empty of a prayer or even a decision. So that time of the prayer needs to have in it either doing the prayer or some decision of delaying it. فَإِن لَمْ يَنْوِ If one does not intend in the earlier time to delay, he will be sinful. If he actually delays. Then the first one when he prays it, it'll be a makeup prayer. If you make the intention to delay Zuhur until Asr time and then you pray it at Asr time because you're a traveler, that's not a makeup prayer. But if you don't make the intention, it will be a makeup prayer. Wallahu alam and Allah knows best. Yes, that's what that's what they told us the sheikh used to prefer. For the sake of that dhikr that you do after Maghrib ten times, because of how important it is, he used to not pray Isha after Maghrib. He would rather do that dhikr ten times and then pray, pray Isha in its own time, according to the sheikh. Yes, so there's no difference here. There's no difference here. It's all saying the same thing. I said the time that between the two uh, prayers, the time that's too long is the time that would fit two rakahs. The time that's short enough is a time that does not fit two rakahs. So in that case, that's also the two rakahs. It would be possible if a person can say those ten fast enough. Maybe the sheikh doesn't want to say it so fast. So he just take his time and then pray Isha later. Yes. So you know that uh, when it's possible that there's water, you're obligated to search for the water before you make tayammum. 
that's a condition for the tayammum. And you have to do that every single time, as long as it's possible that there's water. Just because you didn't find water the first time doesn't mean that it's impossible that there's water. So you have to look the second time and the third time, etc. Until you're sure there's no water. So if a, and and tayammum is only good for one obligation. So if tayammum is only good for one obligation, and you have to look for water each time, as long as you deem it possible that there is water, then that means that if you wanted to pray vuhr with tayammum, you could, and you can shorten, and you can make the intention to bring asr forward, but then asr is another obligation, so the tayammum you did for vuhr is not going to be valid for asr. So you'd have to look for the water first if it's your case to look for the water. So that means that if you're going to combine, that's going to have to be a short time to make sure you do a valid looking too. So if you manage to do a valid looking for water in a short time and make tayammum too in enough in, in the short time, then it's valid. Amin wa fikum. Uh, when you're praying in the later time, you don't have to keep them in order. You don't have to have the intention to merge them. And you don't have to pray them back to back. Thank you. You're welcome. And then, Sheikh, may I ask you one other question, please? Yes. Yes. Uh, you don't have to have the intention to merge them. But uh, I thought when you're delaying a prayer, you have to have the intention. What intention? Delay, to delay the so you're gonna have the intention to delay the prayer in the earlier time. Oh, we're talking about the prayer that follows follows the previous prayer, like Maghrib. Um, I mean, um, Isha following Maghrib. We're talking about. You're asking me about an intention for delaying a prayer. Okay, so delaying prayer means praying Vuhr at Asr time or praying Maghrib at Isha time. Oh, you don't have to have the intention. Oh, uh, you don't have to have the intention to delay. To merge. To merge. You're going to have to have the intention to delay in the time of the earlier prayer in the first place so that you don't let the time go out without an intention. Probably you're 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 mixing, merging, and delaying. Okay, so one would have the intention to delay the prayer. Yes. For example, Asr and Tul, I mean Thor and Tul Asr in the time of Thor. Yes. But when it comes to Asr, the intention does not have to merge them. Or when you pray Vuhr. Pardon? Or if it came to Vuhr also. You don't have to have the intention to merge merge them. That means pray them back together, next to each other. Okay. But, okay. Better cut off So, in the earlier, if you want to bring the later prayer to the earlier time, that means while you're praying the earlier prayer, you need to make the intention to bring the later one forward and then pray it right away. So you don't have to do any of that if you delayed. All you have to do is make the intention in the time of the earlier prayer to delay that prayer until the later time. Then you can pray at any time in that later time. You might even pray it after the later one. You might pray them out of order and put space between them. You might pray Isha all the way at the beginning of Isha time and then pray Maghrib right before Fajr comes in. So I understand we always have to make the intention to if we're delaying the earlier prayer. But when it comes to Make what intention? Uh, that one is delaying that 
first prayer until the second prayer? Yes. When do you make that intention? Within the prayer time of the first prayer. Correct. Amin wa fikum. You're welcome.